All right, I'm gonna make a quick video because the last video that I just posted, a lot of people asked me, okay, what do I actually spend my money on? What should you spend your money on? The one most important thing before we begin is the mindset. If you've got any knowledge at all about self-improvement and entrepreneurship, you know that the actual mindsets that you carry, the way that you think about things is way more important than the actual tactics and advice that I can give you. The mindset that you must implement right now if you want to become more wealthy, this is literally the number one most crucial thing, is that now your time is worth a lot more than what you've currently been valuing it at. If you're working a job, so let's say you're a young person, you work in a normal job, whatever you're getting paid per hour, triple it. That's now going to be the thing that you keep in mind, which is like, yes, that's how much I'm worth per hour. If you're a young person, you're not really working a job or anything. Think $25, $50 an hour. That's how much your time is worth per hour. I know that people start disagreeing and be like, no, but I I live in India. I don't make that much money. Just what you need to do is have this idea that, yeah, of course, I'm going to be successful later on. And because I'm going to be successful later on, like I'm going to, you know, my my wealth and my income is going to go like this, where for a while I'm not really going to make much, but then it's going to grow exponentially, as you've seen in my channel. You must have that faith in yourself. So with that understanding, you know that your future income is going to be quite significantly, considerably, like remarkably bigger than what it is right now. And so you're kind of adjusting your current hours, your current worth to replicate that so you can actually achieve it because right now the reason why the number one reason why you're not successful the number one reason this isn't clickbait that the number one reason why you're not successful is because you don't value your time enough every single successful person values their time every unsuccessful person doesn't your time is now worth at least 25 dollars every single hour that's the one mindset now what should you spend your money on the one best thing that you can ever spend your money on, which you're going to be slightly pissed off because your brain is going to reject this to begin with, is to save time. Your brain isn't really understanding the importance of that, but any any like entrepreneur who's watching this video, they can back me up. The number one best investment, the best use of your money, the best thing to spend your money on when you're first starting off, or honestly, just in general, no matter how rich you are, is to save time. Why? Because if you can save time, and you have reduced mental load, you can then go ahead and achieve that success. You know, that J curve of success you saw like with my channel, my success. I was like a nobody like a year ago. I had 1K subscribers. I remember I was dating a girl a year ago who wasn't my ex-girlfriend, but the girlfriend before her. And we both, she had more subscribers than me and she wasn't even like a YouTuber. She was just like, you know, like a girl who posts like makeup tutorials and she had like 2000 subscribers. She had more subscribers and we had this dream that like, we'd be like the YouTube couple, we'd get like more subscribers and everything, we'd go travel and everything. I'm on like just under 400K on my main channel one year later. Success compounds like, and she's still on the 2K, but... (laughs) I hope she's doing well in life. <laughs> um, you've got to, you've got to be looking forward for this J curve of success. Where right now you're not, you ain't shit, but you know that that success can hit you fast, especially in this modern day, especially with internet businesses, especially with like social media. Success can hit you fast and, and really, really increase. So what you need to do is to free up as much time as possible so that then you can spend that productively doing the thing that's going to increase your like you know the result in that success for me it was business for you it might be a sport it might be music it might be writing songs it might be your career whatever it is you need to reduce time and mental load in other shit this is, I know that this seems really weird. You clicked on this video because you wanted me to tell you, like you literally wanted the answer, like you clicked on this video because you're a fucking weirdo and you already knew the answers that you wanted me to tell you. You wanted me to say, oh, books and um, laptop. Like you, wanted, you already had like this fucking predetermined belief. And because I'm not agreeing with it, you're slightly getting like disappointed by the video. Your brain is thinking, like, oh no, he's wrong. If you make more money than me, then fair enough, don't listen to me. Chances are you're a young person who who finds it kind of weird when I talk about how much money I make. If this advice seems weird to you, if it seems weird when I say like people have paid me a thousand dollars to speak to me for an hour, if it sounds weird to you that like I wake up and I make more overnight whilst I was sleeping than most people make per month. That there was a week span, uh, just like two weeks ago, that I made twenty five thousand pounds like income. Obviously, it was like that was a like high week and stuff. But if if you're doing numbers way better than that, then don't listen to me because you, I should be listening to you. 
you clicked on this video because you wanted some bullshit little tactics like, oh yeah, buy books and you know, and that stuff's good. You're going to get value from that. The number one most best thing to spend your money on is to first free up your time so that you have the mental capacity and the time to actually then go and achieve that success that you wanted. Because the route to wealth, which so many people fucking lie about, the route to wealth, it's simple as fuck, is to increase your income. Everyone tells you to save money, to invest. That's all bullshit. You do not get wealthy by saving money or investing. You get wealthy by increasing your income and you increase your income when you first free up your time and then you become more productive and you focus on one thing that you can become really good at. Do you know how many fucking products I could have made on YouTube? How many like random shit I could have been selling to you so far? How many opportunities I've gotten and I've said no to pretty much every single, every sponsor I've said no apart from one. 99% of the collaboration requests I've gotten I've said no to. All the random bullshit ideas that pop into my mind I've said no to. All the random bullshit tasks that I could do, I've said no to. So that I can focus on recording videos and then reading, which helps me with recording. You must free up your time so that you can excel in one specific area because that's what's going to explode your income. And that's what's going to help you retire your family, retire yourself. We have an incredible opportunity as young people right now who are like young people addicted to the internet. You're watching videos like this. It is, you must have it in your mind that it is entirely reasonable for you to be retired in your 20s. Like, let's say 30s. It, it is reasonable. And honestly, it's like, it's not that, like, it's not actually that difficult. You have, 100%, you have to dedicate your life to it. It isn't something that, you know, it's passive. It's not part-time or anything. You dedicate your life to it. You move back home with your family like I did. And like, I didn't have friends for like an entire year first because I was just solely focused on this shit. I didn't go out. I still like, I don't even go out. I like, I have this fucking huge need to like hook up with girls and you know, validate myself through casual sex and shit. I don't even do it anymore. Like uh, that, that's kind of like an exaggeration because it does happen like every now and then, but it's like, it's, I could go out every single day. I could play video games. I could do a lot of like fucking bullshit, but you dedicate your life to this for five, 10, 15 years and you'll, you won't need money after that. And honestly, like a few years in, you hit that momentum, that snowball effect, that then it's like, it's, it's really, really easy. Like it, it's kind of hard for me not to become more successful now. If you've been following along with my journey, you know where I'm at right now, the snowball effect is kicking off. We hit like three, two to 3K subscribers, new subscribers every day on the main channel, 70K subscribers every month. It's hard for me to like not succeed right now, isn't it? Because we've hit my momentum. Of course, we're going harder and harder now. We're doing more and more. I'm, I'm, I'm learning so much more about leadership. I'm using those principles on my editors. I'm using those principles on you. We're gonna, exp you're literally gonna see exponential fucking growth. You're gonna see people outside of our industry, people outside of self improvement, talking about our cult soon. Why? Because I focus on this one thing. Because I freed up my time. You must understand the value of this. Spend money to free up your time. If you're a normal person, you that's like the number one thing that's holding you back is that your time is used up in so much bullshit, especially with if you're working a job or with school or something. If you can save up a good amount of money or you know, you're making money, spend that money straight away to save time. And the, the, the things that you can do, you're gonna have so much friction with because all your life, you've never really encountered anyone who has this mindset but everyone in your life is broke, like normal people who are still working jobs when they're 40, 50, 60, 70. So this is gonna seem backwards, but if you're a young person, consider getting a chef, consider getting some kind of like meal prep service that essentially you no longer need to cook. Consider paying a cleaner to come through your house so that you don't have to do your chores. If if whatever your hourly rate that you've told yourself is, let's say $25, if you can save an hour by spending $20, then it's worth it. And you know what's weird? Because that, that's common sense, right? So your hour is worth $25. If you can save an hour by spending $20 on like a chef, you save an hour and you spend $20, that's worth it. You know what's really interesting? If you spend $25, $27, you know, there's, there's a bit of a difference, right? Your hour is only worth 25 if you spend 25 to save an hour, you'll say like, oh, it's probably not worth it because you've lost 25, but it is still worth it. Because you like, yeah, you know, the hour exchange and the money exchange is fair enough. You know, you can make 25 pounds or $25 an hour by doing some task online, right? And if, even if you can't make that money right now, you have to have the assumption that you can. This is how you actually grow in the first place because most people think about just where they are right now. 
This is really important. You'll notice that with the successful entrepreneurs, they're constantly seeing themselves as the future version of themselves. Does that make sense? Every decision you make, especially related to self-improvement, the reason why we exercise is because we see our future self in the results that we do today. You'll only become consistent in exercise if you already see yourself as an athlete, if you already see yourself as the kind of person who's been consistent. Because if you don't, if you have the same self-image, the same identity, then you'll continue being the fucking spurk who like maybe has the motivation to go to the gym once or twice and then just quits again. And you probably can relate to that because you've not been doing this mindset training. Trust me when I say this is more important than anything else you could take from my channel. The mindset that you carry, the belief that you have about yourself. So you must say to yourself right now that yeah, of course I'm gonna become successful. Like if someone like fucking Hamza can become successful, then why can't I? Yeah, of course I can. If all these fucking YouTubers and influencers are, are making so much money, if there's, there's so many millions around us, of course I can get a couple of, at least one of them. Have that fucking like obnoxious personality right now. And of course that's gonna make you different from everyone else around you. That means that you can't take the advice of everyone else. So you're gonna be that weird fucking guy who like everyone's like, no, no, don't, don't spend your money like that. Save it, buy a, buy a car. But they're still broke. So there's random shit, I'm not going to go into this ex like fully specific examples of the things that will save your time because it's all just about outsourcing and it depends how your time is being used up. So for, so for myself in my business, the number one sort of time consuming task that I could outsource that would save my time was video editing. So these videos that you see right now on this channel, this unfiltered channel, they don't take any editing. I literally just press record and I speak like just one, one take which has actually been kind of like a challenge for me. I'm not actually like that good of a speaker, but it's been like my practice to just kind of try and speak without stuttering and make like coherent points without needing to constantly stop and start. But on the main channel, I was always editing those videos myself and it was taking a while. Then I outsourced and got editors, my first editor, Sam. And so I paid them less than what I considered my hourly rate was worth. That saved me so much time that then I could spend even more time reading and making my videos better, presenting myself better on camera. Reading is kind of like my main work task because I literally just need to be like as knowledgeable as possible, then go out and actually try things and then just come and like report back to you with like what the most important things is that you can do. So I can't tell you specific examples, but take some time right now to think what's taking up your time. And I know that you're probably going to pussy out. This is the thing. You're probably going to pussy out and you're not going to take this advice and you're going to stay in a very similar position. It's the moment that you take that plunge and you actually outsource. And I can't believe how many people don't do this. You must outsource things to save your time. You must be okay with spending money to save your time because it's that freed up time, that freed up mental load that actually allows you to go and explode your income. You are not going to reach the level of success that you want if you're doing more than a couple of tasks per week. If you're the one cleaning your house, if you're the one cooking your meals, you're not going to become successful. This feels so, like it should feel so weird and you should be so certain that I'm wrong with this because every experience in your life disagrees with me. Everyone in your life will disagree with me. But why, when you know a 40 year old, a 50 year old person, why are they making 10 times less than like a young, dumb fucking influencer? You've seen so many of these like, you know, young influencers and these young like dropshippers and entrepreneurs. And they seem to be saying like they make so ridiculous amount of money. Why are they making so much money? Because they follow principles of entrepreneurship that older people who even you might see as a success, they don't. Where is your time being used up right now? Cooking is a huge one. Best case scenario is that you literally wake up and all you have to do is like the most crucial tasks for your development. Of course, we'll do some like self-improvement habits. We'll go to the gym, we'll meditate. But in terms of increasing your income, it would be, it would probably be like a form of like learning. The, the major business task so for, for a YouTuber, it's literally just record the video, be on video. Apart from that, like when I'm not on video, my business work ends there. There's no random bullshit tasks that I have to do. I've outsourced all of it. I've even like, I don't use dating apps or anything, but the last thing that I was considering to outsource was literally my dating profiles on like Tinder and shit. I was literally gonna pay someone to like, just go through it and like, you know, tell them what my type was and like, they'll they'll do it for me because it's not worth my time to go on that, on that shit. And you need to like, I know it's, this sounds autistic as fuck, but you need to start implementing this. You wanted some bullshit, just fucking normie like advice in this video. And you're, you're probably kind of pissed off that I'm not covering it. 
Like, yeah, spend your money on books, spend your money on like experience. Yeah, that's a good good thing as well. Like what to actually spend your money on experiences are, are incredibly better and more fulfilling than like materialistic purchases. So some girl was like arguing, like she left like fucking five comments, like arguing with me, like saying that I was wrong with the videos, uh, the previous video, because she has better style than everyone. And that's like a good use of money. And then either I must have not pronounced it right, but w the sentence I said in that video was stop buying stuff and start buying experiences. And she said, wait, she, he said to stop buying experience. No, no, no. Experiences, travel, days out. That's the stuff that's actually worth your money. That's the stuff that, that gives you ideas and refreshes your brain and improves your mental health and connects you with other people. You spend your money on experiences and you spend your money to develop your skills, to learn and to save up your time. So for example, spending your money on some kind of like trip with a friend is worth it. Spending your money to like go on a date is worth it. Spending your money to go on like a holiday, to, to go out somewhere where you're gonna learn something is worth it. Spending your money on an item is generally not worth it. Worth it. So the newest like laptop that you want or, you know, sometimes it can be worth it because you need it for business and stuff. But like generally, especially things which like doesn't have a positive ROI in terms of increasing your income later on. So a lot of people just spend money on clothes because of like insecurities and they'll never admit it's insecurities, but it is insecurity. You're just trying to look better. And it's like a level of like ego that if I buy this, then people will validate me more. But if you can free up your time, it, that's like a fucking superpower, honestly. That's, that's your secret advantage is you free up your time. You just spend more time developing your skills. You will surpass everyone in the industry. Everyone's trying to work as much as possible. I'm trying to work as least as possible right now. You spend your money to save time. You spend your money on other people so that they do that your work for you so that you save your time and then you can improve your skills, your understanding of things. And that's what increases your income. That's what truly gets you successful. I hope I've made that point clear in this video because I can't like I can't explain it to you how important this is that all this little bullshit th stuff that you wanted me to say in this video the buy books and all this that's so insignificant even though it's good advice it's so insignificant compared to just free up your time focus on one big thing like one career one business and just fucking drill down on that and keep outsourcing the tasks that other people can do for you keep on you're gonna have such a mental block be the before the first time you do it I remember I waited months before I, I even like found people to edit you know for the first video because it was like you you have all these like limiting beliefs like oh you know like i don't really need someone to do it and like oh you know i kind of enjoy doing it and like no one's going to be able to do it as good as me all the the limiting beliefs that you have before you're about to save your time so before you're about to like get a chef get get like some meal prep service before you're about to outsource like some task on your business all of those limiting beliefs are literally have been conditioned into you by the modern world of like the education system and like the fact that most people aren't entrepreneurs. If you were raised in like an entrepreneur household, you wouldn't have those limiting beliefs, would you? You'd, you'd be ingrained to know that, yeah, like if my hour is worth X, then I will pay someone a little bit less than X to out, or even the same as X to outsource an hour so that then I can spend that hour on what is my highest point of contribution. You only are hesitant right now like something might be in your mind this is addressing to the young entrepreneurs who are watching this some task might be in your mind that you know is would be better for you to outsource but you're holding back on it right now i promise you the moment that you actually do it you're gonna realize like it's like pulling a band-aid off and you're gonna realize like fuck why did i do this earlier and then it, it's like it sets the momentum it gets you used to it and then you start outsourcing more and more the first couple of times that you're trying to do it and you get through like you know some guys who aren't that great you go on to like fiverr and you try and outsource to like india or something it's usually like you're not going to find the perfect person straight away and so you're going to have this level of ego thinking like no 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 uh, you know i'm a perfectionist and it's got to be my video and you, you know all this bullshit that's going to come up and like i want to be the one who does it because it's going to be better if i do it well yeah true but your hour is going to be better spent on like that main like you know the major task of the day right and so someone might come in and do your your the task that you want to outsource to them 30 percent worse and that's not that's unacceptable right because you, you could have done it 30% better. But the difference is that he's now going to do it in the background, which frees up your time so that now you can focus on the thing that actually makes more money, like reading and learning and developing your skills. And imagine if you do this with so many parts of your life so that your, your time is so freed up. That's your advantage. This is the most crucial video I've made on entrepreneurship so far. Your advantage is being able to free up your time 
amongst the generation of people who, who want to fill up their time with busyness. Like these fucking, like uh, most entrepreneurs you see, they're not that good. They're not that hard to beat, honestly. Like a new, a new young man who knows some of the best principles of entrepreneurship, and this is probably the most important one, which is just value your time. You can come in and demolish these people that you already see how I've got like set up, pay, like, you know, channels and set up businesses and everything. So if there's someone right now, like, you know, some, something that's holding you back, let's say you want to be a YouTuber and you're looking at my videos and you're thinking, oh, I can't do that or anything. If you follow the right things, yeah, 100% you can. 100% you can. I saw one of the comments on the previous video where, where again, like, it's the same bullshit. Like, oh, but Hamza, like, you got lucky and not everyone can do this. You went from 5k subscribers to, like, 300k. No, you know, it's, it's luck. And I actually really like that someone respond, responded to him and said, like, no, like, anyone who watched Hamza earlier on knew that this was not luck. It, there was a 0% chance that he wouldn't become a successful YouTuber by the content I was putting out, the consistency, the principles that I was following. There was a 0% chance that I wasn't going to become a successful YouTuber. Of course, there was a 0% chance. Of course I was going to get to this point, and of course we're going to hit 1.5 million before the end of the year on the main channel. Of course we are. The, bro, the, it, it's inevitable. We are currently unstoppable. Because I value my time. Every little thing that just popped into your mind, like your brain started generating reasons why what I just said wasn't true. You, your brain started generating re reasons why we potentially could be, could be stoppable. Why there potentially isn't a zero percent chance of success, a zero percent um, certainty of failure, right? And your brain starts thinking, oh no, but Hamza, uh, your your YouTube channel could die out. You could get banned from YouTube. You could, you know, say something stupid and everyone loses. Bro, when you freed up your time like I have, that stuff can't happen because I spend my time thinking about that shit and making sure it doesn't happen. I read books on leadership for like four hours a day so that I have humility. And so if I do mess up with the things that I say then I know what to do so that people don't like just, you know, hate me for it. Like I'll take humility and I'll admit that it's a mistake. And you can't like hate on a guy like who's, who's fucked up and then says, yeah, it was a mistake and I've learned from it. And like, this is how you guys should learn from it too. So there is a 0% chance that we don't hit at least a million by the end of the year, but I'm aiming for 1.5. Because I freed up my time, I don't do bullshit. Yo, no disrespect to them, but I did two collabs in the last like week or so. And I felt drained afterwards. And they were actually like good collabs. It was really nice speaking to the guys. I did a collab with the, the Three Muslims podcast. And then I, the next day I did one with Cole Hastings. And I really liked both of them. I really had like a good time with them. And straight afterwards, I was like, I felt quite down. And I, you know, it was quick, it's like, it's quite like draining to, you know, be on the public eye and to like do podcasts with people and to like interact and everything. I think I am like naturally an introvert. And I kept, I felt like quite down afterwards. I felt, felt kind of annoyed. I journaled why and I was like, yeah, because I'm not following my essential goals. My essential like sort of work tasks is read and record. I, I made the promise to myself, don't do anything else. Read and record, read and record, read and record. I freed up my time so I can read for four to six hours a day. Because it's with reading. Now you might be thinking, oh, but you've got, if you read so much, like you need to take, but like I automatically take action with, for example, recording. I record a few times a week. So I automatically like take action with the things that I've just learned. You, oh man, I've got so much shit to say about this, but I, I really hope the message is coming across. If you're watching this right now and you want to learn more about it, there's a couple of books I can recommend. The, the, Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. I've recommended this book a lot. That's got a sizable chapter on outsourcing your work. So what we're talking about here, like what to spend your money on is to save your time. You'll do that by outsourcing tasks and they can be personal or business tasks. The one that most entre like successful entrepreneurs speak about is getting a chef or getting like your food made for you. So you can either do like just at the very least, just don't fucking cook unless it's like the most fun part of your day, which gives you a lot of fulfillment and stuff. Chances are it really doesn't. And chances are like, you know, you need to eat and everything, but you just kind of like, you don't realize how much time and mental load actually goes into like buying groceries, preparing food, eating and everything and you'd like it no mental load just the food just appears in front of you you eat it and it disappears like that would be the best case scenario and so many entrepreneurs that i know uh some ovens andrew tate they've all said it as well like if you're broke like get a fucking chef and i know it's it's so weird to think wait if you're broke get a chef but like you don't you need to be rich first you, you actually don't the whole thing is like you'll get rich if you get a chef first 
And I know that there's gonna be people who have never tried this before, as there is it with all of my videos. There's gonna be a bunch of comments of people being like, oh, but you can't really, like, unless you've done it, shut the fuck up, right? Like, if you've done it, if you've experienced life without a chef and a life with a chef or life with, like, outsourcing, cooking and everything, fair enough. But there's so many people who will disagree with this and your brain, your Jeffrey brain is disagreeing with me right now and thinking like, no, but I, I can't do this. But you've never even tried. What I would recommend is like, you know, this idea of like getting a chef seems weird. The exact autistic step is to go online and search for like a meal prep service. And there'll be some in your local area who will like deliver to you in like, you know, plastic boxes and you'll just eat what they make for you. So it's already made. All you have to do is just microwave it or something. That's what I would do if I was you. And those meals, it'll work out to like a similar price of like your weekly groceries. Maybe it's like a little bit more expensive, but the time saved is what you're looking after. Per week, per month, you'll probably spend like 20, 40 hours of like cooking, some shit like that. You'll probably spend like about an hour just preparing food per, uh, about, yeah, maybe about an hour per day, 45 minutes, 30 minutes per day, just preparing food. When I was stayed at Iman Gadzi's place in Dubai, so this like millionaire flew me out to Dubai, we did videos and everything. I, it, one of the things I know is he didn't cook once. Every single meal he just ordered from Deliveroo. And it's, you know, it's kind of expensive. I'm sure like each meal would have been the equivalent of like $20 and stuff, but here's a guy who like really values his time. Why would he cook? One, his, the food he cooks is just gonna be of like, just less tasty than like some you know professional restaurant or something. But two, it's like you save so much time, especially if you like, so I've started doing that now. I fully just copied Iman. And so there's loads of times where like, when I know, like, especially cause I'm bulking now, I've got so many calories. As soon as I finish in the gym, I order it. So that it's like, it's already there when I come back in. All I have to do is just eat. And I've just saved like 45 minutes. That's, that's a lot. I know it doesn't seem significant because right now, because you don't value your time, you're not gonna take this advice. That's why I started this video by saying you have to value your time first. As soon as you value your time and you think, wait, okay, my time is worth $25, $50, and you've just saved 45 minutes by like paying, you know, for like the, the meal prep service or something, and that meal costs you like four pounds. Do you see that? That's a very, very positive ROI. That's an incredibly positive ROI. Now you save that time, you quickly eat, you save that time, and you have so much more mental capacity to just focus on the things that's actually important. I really, really want more of my boys to take this seriously. I might make this more of like a three-part series or some shit where I just drill in these fucking principles into you because this is like, this is the shit that truly changes you. I can go through all these tactics. I can tell you exactly what to do to make your business. I've said this before. I can come to your house, grab my fucking camera, start your YouTube channel. I'll get you 100,000 subscribers, no problem. I know how to do this shit. I'll get you 100,000 subscribers. You'll lose them all. You'd be a shit YouTuber. Most YouTubers you see are pretty bad. Because it's not just about, you know, gaining the audience. It's not just about making the money or something. You need to have the principles that actually maintains this shit. And most people just don't have good principles. If you're not successful right now, you probably don't have good principles. That means that you have to completely alter your brain, that your brain literally has to disagree with something, like some piece of advice before it truly changes for you. You have to experience that thing of thinking like, no, what that person says is wrong then you meditate on it and you slowly like implement it. You give it a try. Maybe you lose some money or something. You give it a try and you're like, oh fuck, like what that person said was actually right. If you're already successful, you don't need to listen. If you're like very successful, you don't need to listen, fair enough. But chances are you've watched this much because you're not very successful right now. You're not very wealthy. You're not where you want to be in life. So you have to understand that your brain got you here. So your brain has to disagree with the advice that would work because your brain isn't getting you to where you want to be. It's a very like weird fucky like mindset to have like, but you honestly can't trust your brain a lot of the times. So I remember saying that to myself so much when I was first getting like onto self-improvement properly. Stop trusting your brain. Just stop trust. My brain was certain that meditation was bullshit. My brain was certain that I couldn't go to the gym because I was too tired. And yeah, I would go to the gym anyway. You know, I'd be like disciplined and like, it's, you know, it's a, such an uphill battle when you don't want to go and you're really too tired. And I'd have a fantastic workout. I feel better after hitting a meditation session because your brain isn't like conditioned. It doesn't have the good habits inside of it to know what's right or wrong right now. So these principles that I've mentioned in this video, they're gonna seem wrong to your brain, but valuing your time is the single best thing that you can do and spending your money to save time is how you're gonna get ahead whilst everyone else's time is all used up. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it.